Okay, here we look at uh, Super Egyptians review on GM Jones book Stolen Legacy. And while we do, we're going to watch one of his debunk videos that he's made, one of many, and just let it run in the background as I uh, go to this. It was really a, in a response to somebody else saying that GM Jones was uh, some in incredible intellectual Hall of Fame uh, person and that he deserved to be enshrined. And um, so here's the review. Keep your garble to yourself. The book your hero wrote, some of the wild claims concerning Greek temples such as the Parthenon in Athens and the Oracle of Delphi on being cheap Egyptian copies leaves the reader wondering if the author is completely insane due to the fact that these type of monuments were never found in Egypt. Now there was an oracle way out, but that's a different thing entirely. His statements concerning some Greek literature achievements such as how could Aristotle have written over 1,000 books and really got them from Egypt after Alexander's great invasion is really quite silly. He insinuates in the book that that's what would have, that that's how that it happened. They just stole the books and ran with it. But they had been, you know, the, people don't realize the Library of Alexandria. Uh, Alexandria was built after Alexander in the first place, and the culmination of the books were there done by these Greek people. So it's, it's just a, a moot point. First, it is well known that his books were written by his thousands of students that he would, had taught over his entire teaching career. And yeah, that's well documented. Second, no similar documents no similar documents were ever found by archaeologists in the Egyptian hieroglyphic language. Third, the author failed to provide an explanation for the famous literary works such as those of the Trojan War, which were written many centuries before the time period involved. If the author really believes that the Greeks were so ignorant as portrayed in his book, I would like him to explain to me why the Greeks did not get conquered by the Persians, who were the world superpower at that time, and that succeeded in conquering every other nation. I mean, they did through Babylon, even Egypt, everywhere, and they went up into there, but it was a stop. There quite a few times was a stop there. In fact, I believe that even the Egyptians accounted to Solon that it was the Greeks and so on that had stopped the people that were coming and trying to take over from Atlantis and doing their thing, which probably a totally different reality here, but... Um, James is not a classicist or a philosopher. He doesn't even know the origin of the word philosophia, which he says is Egyptian instead of Greek, which is strange because philo is Greek for love, and sophia means wisdom. And that's why they had later the Templars and the Sophia God and things, and they thought it was blasphemy and threw this big fit. But he can't bring something new to the discipline so he sat down to write a fictional account about the Greeks stealing Egyptian philosophy. And in the process, he's also trying to induct the fact that the Egyptians were somehow Negroid and not Caucasian like we all know in DNA genetics have all shown now for sure. But wait, it, it was really not a conquest before. The only blacks in the area, the Nubians, as seen here in the picture, weren't even allowed into Egypt uh, the Simna Stilae of Sinusuret the third will just go as one example of them. So, this book is full of ridiculously intense hate propaganda against the ancient Greeks and Caucasians in general. It misrepresents the most obvious facts and serves no other purpose than to slander the ancient Greek philosophy in favor of an immensely fantastic attribution to all the Western world's great cultural events to the African continent. I'd like to mention to you that uh, this is a Coptic Egyptian that is speaking here, and he's extremely proud of his heritage and for good reason. And the Coptics are known to be one of the remnants left of the ancient Egyptians that were there that took on Christianity and so on. And so he's easily giving up the fact that after Egypt did all of its badass stuff, you can see plainly where it goes from there and that it wasn't necessarily stolen, perhaps a good mending of the minds and it all coming together, like Caucasians go around, you know, they learned how to fly here, I don't know if you're aware, but uh, now they've 
gone around and showed everybody, and everybody can fly now. Well, most countries are able to fly now. And uh, so, and whenever we say African, black people jump on that like crazy, like all of a sudden all of this was Negroid at one time. And in, in truth and reality, if you look at Caucasians, they were all through that area. They were all through the Horn of Africa, and they were all across North Africa above the Sahara. Before the Sahara became this area, they were in even a larger area, much larger. Down in the Cape, you see the Hofmeyer sites and so on. Let's go back to his review. As a longtime researcher of Masonic history, it is clear where the work stole its bad ideas. They are ultimately derived from Terrison's life of Sethos, although James probably did not go back this far. His sources are some fictional Masonic works like the Ancient Mysteries and Modern Masonry, things like that. Sethos, the 1732 English edition. It is clearly fictional and largely an artifact of the post-Napoleonic Egyptian craze. Of course, this was long before hieroglyphics were even translated. Anyone knowing a basic history of the account of the ancient world would have to be insane to take this seriously. It is completely transparent today as simple racism and a desperate need for self-esteem at the expense of others. This is the only thing classic about this classic document of pseudo-history and African-American racism. And I think he did it justice and summized it up pretty much at the end there. Books like this are being written. Blacks are being misled down a primrose path that really has no basis in reality. Photoshopped pictures, false beliefs. And listen, it's as simple as this. The ancient Nubians aren't related to anybody from West Africa or anybody in the first place. The ancient Nubians weren't allowed into Egypt. The people you're looking at here and these blonde-eyed statues and stuff from the Old Kingdom and first early dynasties are your founders of ancient Egypt. These people. And so it's kind of pathetic to have this just keep continuing and continuing, almost like in the face of reality, they're just going to keep saying it. While caught with their hand in the cookie jar, they're just going to start yumming cookies in their mouth and going, I ain't eating nothing. It looks quite pathetic to most everybody taking a glance at it at any time. They try to tell you that Caucasians are albinos, yet albinos are being eaten there for their magic qualities. Which one of these two looks like an Egyptian? Miss this one. Anyhow, guys, like, share, and subscribe, and I'd like for you to go take a look at a super Egyptian. It's one word. You look at his site. He's got a lot of other debunking uh, videos, definitely, and I've used pieces of them. I didn't know he had such a repertoire of them, or nor even uh, Seven Phoenician Seven. I've just recently gotten into the fact of these people um, having the videos too here, and so I've used some of their pieces in a few uh, videos, and then all of a sudden it showed up in the sidebar. I went to his main site and saw that he had so many. This is probably maybe a year ago. But, uh, yeah, uh, like, share, and subscribe, and take a look at his site, and go look at 7 Phoenician 7s. All three, and some more, definitely show you this truth and fact that's somehow hidden and not allowed to just be commonly known, and due to that fact, blacks seem to be really grasping at something that really had nothing to do with them. Again, like the Bible. And, uh, yeah. Peace.